Hello, NetRoots Nation. It's Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. Thank you so much for allowing me to share space with all of you. I know we want to talk about the congressional landscape of the current Build Back Better plan, which is $3.5 trillion investment in people. I always say we have to focus not only on uh, the roads and the things that are outside of our homes, but things that are inside of our homes. So care economy, making sure that the water coming through our homes are clean without, you know, fully, completely free from lead and so much more. I know the White House continues to talk to Senators Manchin and Cinema to find out exactly what their asks and demands are. Uh, of course, the Progressive Caucus continues to be very much engaged, connected to movement organizations, our labor partners, and so many more folks that wanna make sure that this is meaningful investment for everyone across the nation, not just for some. I know that many of my progressive colleagues and I have vowed to hold the line, and we continue to do that. I know for me, I've been very much about bringing those human stories from home that talk about the need for childcare, the home care based uh, programs, and so much more. I know for many of the environmental justice groups and myself as well, we wanna make sure that we are saving our earth, again, with meaningful investment in climate. So we're gonna hold the line, and thanks to all of you and the incredible work that you're doing, you're helping us give credibility to what we're saying so that it's not just numbers and various strategies that folks wanna um, focus on, but that it is about the real impact that we're gonna have um, on people's lives. So from housing as an infrastructure to child tax credit becoming permanent, to replacing every single lead contaminated pipeline across our nation, to making sure that immigrants, our neighbors, our immigrant neighbors are included in that investment. So just know, again, we're gonna hold the line because many of you are demanding us to, so continue to be bold in that sense. Thanks. How are you and other members of the Progressive Caucus pushing for progressive policy solutions to issues like climate change, immigration, education, economic policy, and more? I know uh, for myself, uh, you know, in regards to what is critically important as we think about the People's Infrastructure Bill, as we think about building back better, I represent the third poorest congressional district in the country. So right now, it's getting Build Back Better Act passed with the key priorities for my neighbors from you know, making sure that we have access to home repair, making sure that we are preventing a continuation of flooding of many of our homes. So making sure we have climate resiliency as well as addressing climate crisis directly, making sure that we're addressing the expansion and need to expand healthcare coverage around hearing, um, around vision and around dental. And, you know, so much more. I know that much of my uh, communities, especially my immigrant communities, want to make sure that they're not left out. And I know the Progressive Caucus continues to demand that immigration, uh, investment in immigration, that there be a pathway, investment in that pathway is included in the reconciliation, or again, what I call the people's infrastructure. You should all know that Michigan has a serious lack of affordable housing. Uh, we lost more black home ownership in Michigan than any other state in the country. And so we got to make sure that, again, uh, we're taking care of people inside their homes, not just uh, thinking about brick and mortar and what's outside of the home. And you all know I am demanding that water is a human right. And that means making sure that water is clean. But too many of the schools in my district um, have shut down their water fountains with literally garbage bags over them. You know, I always believe that uh, you know a child deserves human dignity as they try to access education. Uh, but the fact that water is life, that for us not to access clean water and not for us as a federal government to be investing it in a very meaningful way, I think would be a huge loss uh, as we move forward with Build Back Better. How can the progressive movement help put pressure on the moderate members of Congress, <laughs> Senator Manchin, to pass these bills that are being discussed? You know, one of the things that the progressive movement can help in making sure that we put the pressure on uh, many of colleagues that may still be disconnected with the pain on the ground and with the sense of urgency. I think the movement work uh, that you all are part of, you know, move with that sense of urgency that is lacking in Congress. You know, so many of my colleagues 
don't fully understand what it means to be underinsured or uninsured. Many don't understand what it means to send their child to a school without clean drinking water or a school that doesn't have the resources it needs to making sure that that education is not just there, but it's quality education. It's education that has equitable funding. And so for all of you, you need to bring those real life human stories. So many do not understand what it felt like during the pandemic as a frontline worker not to have access to childcare. Many didn't understand what it felt like to live with pre-existing conditions because of environmental racism, because corporate polluters are literally around black and brown communities. Uh, and we have to address climate. We have to stop the investment in the fossil fuel industry. You all bring those real life stories and those truths that sometimes is lacking or in many ways buried underneath a lot of the rhetoric of DC language that again is so disconnected with the pain on the ground. Got it. Right now, Representative Tlaib, we are seeing an all out attack on voting rights in this country. How is protecting voting rights critical to progressive priorities like environmental justice and reproductive justice? So I think it's really important um, that not only are we talking about meaningful investment into our communities with reconciliation or what I call the people's infrastructure, I think as you all are gathering today at, as Netroots Nation, that we are talking also about the historic and unbelievable attack on voting rights in our country and how is protecting voting rights important to the progressive priorities like environmental justice or reproductive justice. We all know if we don't fight to ensure equitable access to the ballot box for people like us, our fight to end economic and social inequality will be tremendous. It will be harder for our movement. It's no coincidence that many of our black neighbor, neighborhoods waited in line at the polls 29% longer than those residing in our white neighborhoods. It's no coincidence that at a time when minority Americans are on track to become the majority, that white folks are attempting, especially those that are elected, are attempting to cling to the power by trying to rob them of the right to vote. There is no question that the recent judicial decision to rescind major parts of the Voting Rights Act made racial economic inequality worse. We got to break the vicious cycle and stand up for every single person's right to vote in this country. Not only that, we should expand on them in every way we can. That's why I introduced legislation that prevents states from barring formerly incarcerated individuals from voting due to debts owed through criminal justice system. In the year 2021, we should not have anything that even remotely resembles a poll tax keeping largely people of color from voting. So I hope you all stand with me in making sure that we connect these movements together and understanding there are folks that wanna close the door of having us to have a seat at the table, but more importantly, having our voices at all levels of government. 